Good morning, guys, or good afternoon. Whether you're joining me from the present or the future, welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. This is actually Thursday's video that is going to be uploaded on Friday because of something weird going on with YouTube right now. However, this is going to be our Future Fight for um, the Gallup deck um, out of Stargate. So Gallup is our Generation Break um, Dimension Police deck. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, uh, for those of you who don't, you are going to find out uh, via this video. Um, so we are going to go ahead and flip over our G zone as usual. And yes, we are continuing with the Stargate stuff. So let's get right into this build. Um, might be a little wacky, but you guys will see why we run everything that we run. So we run eight grade threes, um, four Bravest Victor Grand Gallop to start off with. This is our new Grand Gallop card that came out of this set. It's a 13k base automatically, which helps a lot more than you guys think for all of you guys in the game that are like, oh, cross rides are useless still. Well, you know, try being attacked by a 21k or 22k column and having someone guard you with a 10k block. Like, it really does make a difference. Um, but it has two abilities, a continuous hand ability that says, if you do not have a face-up grade 4 card with Grant or with Gallop in its name on your Vanguard or G-Zone, this card cannot be normal card to rear guard circle. So you can't uh, call it unless you're G-Break, basically. Um, so I don't really call these to rear guard circles anyways. I just use them for stride fighter, so that skill is kind of irrelevant to me. Uh, the second ability is when your G-Unit strides, you can Soul Blast 1, choose one of your Vanguards, and it gets plus 12k. So this makes your... Um, so basically whenever you stride, because you have a 13k base, you'll be a 28k stride base. And then when you use the skill of uh, Grand Gallop, you'll get plus 12. And then you'll be a 40k base, which really, really helps with all of your burst stuff. Um, really quick, I'm gonna go into burst. Uh, burst is the dimension police keyword that says if your Vanguard is a certain amount of power, um, then something happens. Whenever there's a burst skill, it's usually related to how big your Vanguard is in power. So. Um, just remember that. Then we have uh, three great cosmic hero Grandabot. Um, what Grandabot does is it just has a rear guard ability. We never want to ride this card, but it is really good on the rear guard circle. Um, when this card attacks, if our vanguard's power is 40,000 or more, then this unit gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the battle when it's attacking. So we do run this because it attacks for 21 um, by itself. We do run stand triggers as well. So if we happen to rip a stand trigger, it will restand and it would be 16, then it would attack and be 26. So uh, makes very good numbers against your opponent if they're also not playing Gallop. Um, then we have one Bravest Rush uh, Grand Gallop. This is kind of like our backup ride Grand Gallop, um, but it also has a rear guard ability if we want to use it as a rear guard. So it has three abilities. Let's go over all three of them. The first one is a burst rear guard generation break three ability. It says when your Vanguard attacks, if your Vanguard's power is 30,000 or greater, um, until the end of the turn, this unit gets plus 4,000. And if your Vanguard's power is 60,000 or greater, this unit gets plus one critical. So um, obviously it's when your Vanguard attacks. So if your Vanguard attacks twice uh, for 60k or more, this card will be getting 8k and two critical because it does stack. It's not once per turn. Um, so you do want to attack with your Vanguard before attacking with this on the rear guard all the time. Um, but then you do also want to attack with your Vanguard like it works very well with Bravest Peak Excalib because um, Excalib attacks twice usually um, So then it has two Vanguard abilities in the case that we ride it as our backup grade 3 The first Vanguard ability is at the beginning of your ride phase if the number of cards in your hand is two or less We can free stride uh, or we can stride for free without discarding any cards from our hand So that's pretty cool um, makes it so that when you're forced into a rough spot and you don't have any cards in your hand almost then you can stride uh, then it has a stride skill that says during your turn when your G unit strides um, counter boss one or um, oh actually um, during the turn when your G unit strides you choose one of your vanguards it automatically gets 4k and then if the unit has the burst ability then you can counter boss one and then that unit gets 4k more um, so pretty good then we um, have four Twin Order and one Diggerone. Uh, this is just 10K uh, Vanillas that we're running. Uh, the reason why we're running 10K Vanillas is because it synergizes very well with Build Standard. Uh, makes our grade two turn a 14K on what's usually our opponent's 9K. Um, and then also just helps us draw a card and 
helps us make a number and helps us defensively as well to block some of the rush and um, block our opponent's vanguard if they're attacking for 9k plus their starter we can throw down a 10k block to um, no pass. Then um, for our other grade twos we're running four Cosmic Hero Grand Hogan. Um, Grand Hogan has a burst ability that is generation break one. Uh, when this unit is placed on the rear guard circle, you can, uh, if you have a vanguard with gallop in its name, you counter boss one. If you do, you draw a card. If your vanguard's power is 40,000 or greater, you counter charge, and this unit gets plus 4,000. So basically, when you're on a stride at all, and you use stride skill, you're automatically 40k. So any burst uh, skills in this deck that say 40,000 power or greater, you're already at that when you stride. So basically, um, this card is very good because you just counter boss one, you draw. You counter charge and then you give plus 4k so you basically just give um plus 4k and draw for free which is really good um and then we have four cosmic hero grand wisdom uh grand wisdom's ability is on the rear guard circle when this unit attacks a vanguard if we have a grade through a greater vanguard we can choose to have this unit gain 4,000 power until the end of the battle if we do at the end of the turn we put this card into our soul and we counter charge so helps with our resources our soul and our counter charge because um, the resources can be kind of heavy in this deck, um, especially Counter Blast and Soul Blast, but more more so Counter Blast. Um, but yeah, it keeps our resources up long enough for us to end our opponent. Uh, then we run four Cosmic Hero Grand Rope. Uh, Grand Rope is our Strive Fodder, as well as our Gallop Searcher. If we start with either one of these in hand, but also a Grand Rope, we can just search out Bravest Victor um, Grand Gallop. So yeah. Uh, then we have four Enigma and Calm for our PG. I think it's probably the best uh, deep lease PG for this build to use. It has three abilities. First one is Sentinel, meaning that you can't play more than four Sentinels in your deck. The second one is the PG skill. When this unit is placed on the guard circle, we can discard a card from our hand. If we do, choose one of your units that's being attacked, and it cannot be hit until the end of the battle, so it can PG Vanguard and Rear Guard. And then the really good ability, the best ability of it, in my opinion, is the Burst ability. That activates in the drop zone it is generation break two at the end of the battle that your vanguard with the burst ability attacked if that unit's power is 40,000 or greater which it usually always is you can counter blast one soul blast one if you do you bounce this pg to your hand from your drop zone and then if the unit's power is 40,000 or 45,000 or greater you counter charge one so when you use this skill um you're basically just soul blasting to get the pg back to your deck um if your vanguard is 40 45,000 or greater it's really good then we have um, four Cosmic Hero Grand Scout. Grand Scout has a GB2 of its own. It says when this unit is placed on Rear Guard Circle, we can counter boss one, Soul Boss one. If we do, we choose one of our Vanguards with Gallop in its card name, and its power doubles until the end of the turn. And at the end of the turn, we retire this unit and we Soul Charge one. So um, this is kind of what helps you in games in this deck. Like you can attack your opponent with um, like one of your main plays is going for X Gallop, Bravest Peak X Gallop. And when you go for a Bravest Peak, you want to make it as big as possible so that when you check criticals or your opponent just guards you in general, like you want to be able to make them have to PG twice and they can only do that for so long. Um, for our starter, we run one build standard. It looks like a Lego. <laughs> it is our Lego starter. You flip it and you say, hey, Lego. But, um, but it has two abilities. Uh, it has a Forerunner skill. That means it can move back when it's ridden upon, like most starters in the game, to a rear guard circle. Um, and the second one is an act ability that says counter boss one, sh uh, shove this card in the soul, draw a card, and you choose one of your vanguards and it gets plus 4k. So this is like deceptively good because it uh, gets you to draw a little bit uh, deeper in your deck if you're looking for a grade to ride or you're looking for a certain card for a combo in your next turn. Um, you can pretty much get to it while also changing your vanguard's number so that you don't need a booster. For that turn you can just like shove it in draw 4k to vanguard and then swing and it'll usually be the same number as if you had your starter still um so then we have uh for our triggers we have eight crit four stand four heal uh we have four grand beat which is our gallop crit that shoves the soul gives our vanguard 5000 until the end of the battle and draws a card um then we have four metal board grass cutter uh what metal board grass cutter does is it can it isn't really relevant for this deck because we're not running Metal Borgs, but it is relevant in the fact that you can play it on Rear Guard and shove it to Soul because it's still an act ability where you're paying the cost and the cost is shoving it to Soul. So you would be shoving it to Soul and then you wouldn't be doing anything with the rest of the skill. 
And then we have four of our stand trigger, which is Operation Girl Rinka. Uh, Rinka has a burst ability that really helps you get around one of the key weaknesses of the stack, um, which would be your opponent PGing you. And so what Rinka does is you can place it on your rear guard circle. If you're Generation Break 2, you can shove it into your soul. If your Vanguard's power is 20,000 or greater, you draw a card. And if your Vanguard's power is 35,000 or greater, then you choose one of your Vanguards with the burst ability and it gets a auto skill until the end of the turn. And then the auto skill is when your drive check reveals a grade three, you can soul blast one. If you do, you choose the unit with the Sentinel ability on your opponent's guard circle. And that unit's effects with cannot be hit are nullified. So basically what that means is that whenever um, Rinka gives your Vanguard a skill, so whenever you check a grade three, you can soul blast one. And you can like nullify your opponent's PG, which means that if they PG you once, you check your grade three, you soul blast, then the attack hits. So a lot of times that will kill your opponent or at least put them in a situation where they don't want to be in because they just wasted a PG and it didn't even work. Um, then we have four dimensional robo mechanic Kathy. This is our new G guard heal um, that says when this, uh, our new G guard heal for dimension police says when this card is discarded for the cost of following a G guardian, we can bind this card and we can bind another heal that was already in our drop zone. If we do counter charge one or soul charge one, um, yeah, it keeps our resources alive. Not much to say about that. You guys hear about it in every video. Um, but then starting off our G zone with our ultimate stride, we have our ultimate stride for the Stargate, which is a zero dragon of destroy star Stark. Basically Stark is just a really, really good finisher. Um, it says when this unit is placed on Vanguard circle, you can counter boss two. If you do until the end of the turn, this unit gets minus two drive. Um, and it does not rest for its attack, but it can attack up to three times. So you can swing at your opponent three times for 36. Usually I go into this when they're at five damage or when you kind of don't see a way left for you to win, but you can ultimate stride. Um, you can kind of just do that and hope for the best. And uh, they don't have like three PGs or like G guards that can go over 36 by themselves, etc. Um, then we have for uh, Bravest Peak X Gala, this is one of our key cards in the deck, probably the most key stride in the deck. Um, it has two abilities. The first one is a burst ability that says, when this unit attacks, if this unit's power is 40,000 or greater, we can counter blast one and flip a unit face up from our G zone. If we do, this unit gets plus one drive. And then at the end of the battle, if it's 80,000 or greater, stand this unit and it gets minus four drive. So um, basically what this means is that you can swing, you're automatically 40, and then if you're Generation Break 3, because that's the only way that you're really going to be um, over 80,000 after you restand, unless you happen to be Generation Break 2, like you G-guarded before you went into this, and then you use Grand Scout skill to double the power, um, then it would be 80k exactly on your first stride turn. Um, and then you restand it, honestly, or um, not honestly, but... Uh, whatever crits you stack on this unit or anything like that skills or anything just stay so it's very important to um, This is a very threatening card to your opponent. So it's really very hard not to die to uh, So that's what you end up killing your opponent on uh, It's generation break three vanguard ability is this unit gets plus 10,000 for each face up card in your G zone So the later the game goes on the bigger this gets every time you stride into it um, Also, it gets bigger like in the middle of its attack because you attack, you counter blast one, and you flip a card in your G zone, so you're basically giving plus 10k to it, as long as you're hitting GB3 when you're um, when you're flipping. So yeah, pretty good. Then we run um, three Super Cosmic Hero X Gallop as like kind of like a backup. If your opponent does happen to survive X Gallops by some means, uh, you can either X Gallop them or uh, GB8 them, or even X Tiger them. There's like a lot of options, but um, we do run three X Gallop because it's a good flip fodder for um, X Gallop. Uh, we do flip Sabreeze with the one um, X Gallop, and then with the next two, we flip two X Gallops. And then we decide if we would rather um, go X Gallop again or Super Cosmic Hero X Gallop instead of Bravest Peak. So, what um, the Super Cosmic Hero X Gallop does is it has a burst ability that is Generation Break 2 on the Vanguard Circle. So, when this unit's attack, uh, or when this unit attacks a Vanguard, Counter boss one, choose a card from your G zone, turn it face up. If this unit's power is 35,000 or greater, or 35,000 or greater, um, that's when you can pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets plus one drive until the end of the battle. And if this unit's power is 40,000 or greater, 
All the rare cards in your front row get plus 4,000 for each face-up card named Excalib in your G zone until the end of the turn. So basically, since you only run three, when you're using the last one, which you shouldn't be using this until you're using the last one anyways, um, but all the rear guards in your front row would get 8k. Um, that's not really that relevant all the time, seeing as our rear guards aren't that powerful, um, but at max it would make like 21k base. Um, then we have a Dimensional Robo Supreme Commander Ultimate Die King. Ultimate Die King uh, is our Generation Break 8 unit of the deck, and its skill is Auto Vanguard Generation Break 8. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, the, this unit gets uh, plus 5,000, or sorry, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, this unit gets plus 10,000 and a critical for each one of your rear guards until the end of the battle. At the end of the battle, if this unit's power is 80,000 or greater, um, all your rear guards get power plus 10,000 for each one of this unit's critical until the end of the turn. So basically what ends up happening is you want to have five rear guards when you go into this card. You swing with Vanguard. Um, Vanguard will get plus 60,000 and six critical, or sorry, plus 50,000 and five critical. And it already has a critical by itself, so at the end of the battle, um, if this unit's power is 80,000 or greater, which it should be, um, all of your rear guards um, get plus 60,000 because it had six critical. So, very, very good card to finish off your opponent with. Then we have um, one Super Cosmic Hero X Tiger, uh, basically just a really big beater, um, beat stick stride. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can um, flip a card face up in your G zone. If you do, this unit gets plus 4,000 for each face-up card in your G-Zone to the end of the battle. And if this unit's power is 45,000 or greater, it gets a critical. So if you know that your opponent can't guard, you need a critical to beat them, and you need to attack them with something big, then you can just go into X-Tiger and you probably have the game. And then we have one Sabriz in case our opponent tries to grade lock uh, game with us. You guys know the deal. And then we have three uh, great Galactic Beast Zeal for our G-Guardians and two... Super Cosmic Hero X Karavu. Um, Great Galactic Beast Zeal is our my new favorite G-Guard in this deck, honestly, or in Dimension Police in general, which is very, very good. Um, its skill is when this unit is placed on the guard circle, you can Soul Blast one. If you do, choose one of your opponent's units and it gets minus 5,000 power. And then if the number of cards in your damage zone is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your opponent's damage zone, you can Counter Blast one and have your Vanguard get plus 5,000 until the end of the turn. So that uh, becomes very helpful when we're already on a cross stride that's already hard to hit numbers against us. Like when we use that G Garden, we become 18k base for the entire turn. So that's great. And then we have two Super Cosmic Hero X Carvu. Um, X Carvu kind of does a similar thing, except without the cost um, of Soul Blasting and Counter Blasting. So if we don't have that, we can just use X Carvu instead. And our X Carvu skill is when it's placed on the guard circle. If my opponent's attacking unit's power is 30,000 or greater, this unit gets plus 10,000 shield. Then we can choose a card from our hand and discard it and choose one of our vanguards and it gets 4k until the end of the turn. So this will make us a 17k base for the rest of the turn. So our G-guards are, you know, obviously very good defensively. Um, there are some G-guards that can only be used offensively against your opponent and stuff like that. But um, this deck kind of already has its built-in aggression with all the burst stuff, so I really like that they make the G-Guards like super defensive and they make like um, Bravest Victor um, a 13k base for defense purposes. Um, so we are going to load up Gallop Game 1, we're playing against Gold Paladin. Uh, we decide to keep our hand the first time around. We draw for turn, um, we ride, we attack for 12, we check a crit. We deal two, two damage, um, checks a stand trigger in our grade three. Uh, he rides to grade two, and then just attacks us for 14, checks a Gurgwit. We check a Grand Hogan. Um, we ride twin order, we use build standard to counter boss one, shove the soul, draw a card, then we attack for 14, which is the number, like I was saying, in the uh, deck building part of this video. So our opponent attacks us with rear guard, we guard it, and then we take Vanguard, we get a heal trigger. We um, stride into Grand Gallop, uh, we go into X Gallop stride, then we just attack uh, for 40k after using the stride skill. Our opponent no guards. We check a stand trigger, a twin order, a critical, and a critical. So that's just a, a example of like things that can happen where you check double crit. Our opponent does heal out of it, um, so that's good. We can see a better game rather than just me sacking 
them. Um, so goes into Gregory Helios, gets his abilities, gets his cards, calls out um, his Flame of Victory from um, the deck as rest, and then he calls a Giga Tech Ringer. And then he shuffles his deck, um, and then he attacks us for 34. We take it, he attacks with Vanguard, we take it. Um, he checks Vanilla, uh, Stand Trigger, Standing a Unit, and then he checks nothing else. So we also get a Stand Trigger, um, making us 23, and his rear guards can't hit us, so he just passes his turn. Uh, we stride, we use the on-stride skill, and then the Generation Break 3 ability gives um, this unit plus 20k. Then we use the skill of Grand Scout to double the power, so this unit is uh, now 120k. Uh, we use the skill of Rinka to give it the PG busting skill. And then we don't really have any rear guards that we can reliably play. Um, so we just attack, counter boss one, flip one. This unit goes up by 10,000 power, so it's 137. And he tries the Salonius to see if he can get a PG. And then he just ends up no guarding. Um, so we check uh, zero, or we check nothing, a critical, a grade three, and another critical. So. He's definitely dead this time. Um, so that's kind of like what I was saying in the deck building part of the video. Like this deck and Dimension Police decks in general are just built to be extremely Vanguard reliant, which is why um, to a person like me, it can be kind of annoying um, to play and play against because you're not used to betting everything on your Vanguard. And then um, if your Vanguard doesn't work, you just you lose basically. Um, or you're in like a worse position. But we're um, fighting Gurgwit again for game two. We ride a PG this time. Um, our opponent rides, attacks us, we take it. Uh, we unfortunately damage check a Grand Gallop. We use Bold Standard to get a card. Um, they check a critical, they attack us, we take their no block. And then uh, we play uh, Gallop and the crit, shove the crit to soul, we draw a card, and then we check crit and a stride fodder. Um, then our opponent goes into Gurgwit Helios, calls a PG, um, can't use the skill because it's not Unite, and then calls out a card, uses um, Karina's skill to um, rest it, put a card back, counter charge draw, uses the skill of Hoel to get Henrius after playing Gig Tech Ringer from hand, um, Gig Tech Ringer gives 5k and draws, and then uses um, Henrius skill to get top 3 and then get the same PG back that they put back. And then they use the skill of the PG to put that other card back, and at the end of the turn, this PG bounces to hand. Um, so he pumps up all of his units because of Salonius. And then he attacks us for 22. We 10k guard uh, for 23. Our opponent attacks our Vanguard. We no guard. We get, uh, he gets a crit, a heal, a stand, and a vanilla. So... That was some really good checks. Um, we do damage one, damage two, so that his rear guard can't hit us, 18. And then we take his other rear guard uh, at the end of the battle, or at the end of the turn, his uh, PG bounces. So we stride, we use the stride skill, soul blast, uh, give 12k. And then we call out our grade three, um, the grade three that's good on rear guard circle, Grand Abbott. Uh, Grand Abbott attacks for 21. He uses Salonius skill, top two cards to the guard circle, which is not enough. And then he guards. Um, we attack. We kind of boss one flip. He no guards. We check one, check two, check three, and check four, which is a heal, um, thankfully. Because uh, we did not want to deal with the Gurgwit at um, the Gurgwit Helios while we're at four damage and not rely on a crit, basically. Um, so then he uses the skills, calls out his cards. Um, he go ahead and then he, uh, calls Salonius and then he calls Harry from his hand. Um, he pumps up all of his cards accordingly and then he attacks us for 23 to our Vanguard. We decide to just take it because now that I know that I have two heals, I can block, um, Gurgwit Helios, but also make myself a good base power for the rest of the turn. So I use um, Zeal to give minus 5k to his Vanguard, plus 5 to mine. Same thing again. 
Um, so that ends up being a one to pass. And then I throw down a 10 for a three to pass after using my heal trigger skill to um, counter charge. So I three to pass, I check a Salonius grade two, a PG, um, a grade two, and then a Quill. So he came and hit our Vanguard because he didn't check any triggers, so he just attacks the Rearguard and calls it a turn. Uh, we stride into Exile up again, playing another 10k on a Rearguard Circle, doesn't really matter. Um, generation Break 3, uh, you know, our card would get 40k. So it gains 40k, we're counter blasting one, flipping one, so it gets 10k, and then it gets 5k from the crit. So it is 95. Um, we quad drive, uh, get a stand trigger, stand power, uh, get a crit trigger, crit to vanguard, power to rear guard. Um, we use the skill of RPG to get it back to hand. We attack rear guard for 10. Uh, he lets it go, then we attack with 95 to crit. He takes two damage, and then we attack with 20k, and he guards with a 10. Um, and then he shot the two cards from his hand. He goes into um, the Heavenly Law Gurguit. Um, he counter boss one, full boss one, uh, calls a card out. It's Unite, so he calls the top card out as rest. He uh, uses Gigatech Ringer to draw a card, give something 5k shuffle. And put the Giga Tiger Ringer back to deck. Um, then he calls another Giga Tiger Ringer. Uh, he calls a Golbadol. Um, and then he calls a Quill. Um, and then he discards a card for Heavenly Law Gargoyle skill. Uh, and then he gives all of his units plus 10k. Uh, since he has five Gargoyles face up in the G zone, um, his all of his uh, units get 10k for each. And then he attacks us for 21, we 10k block. Uh, then he attacks us for 41. Um, he searches the card, which ends up being Horsa, and then he shuffles his deck. Uh, 41 is way too big for our liking, so we just take it. Um, he then attacks us for 17, we intercept. And then our opponent attacks us for 36, uh, getting checking top seven. And I think he's deciding upon what he wants to call. And he decides to call Karinas. Um, and then he boosts with his stand trigger. Uh, we decided PG. And then our opponent checks three cards. Um, first one, nothing. Second one, the heal. Third one is agree two. I think he's betting on a stand trigger to restand his quill skill again. Um, we pass over our turn, we stride, um, our stride gets, you know, 60k power from the GB3, uh, we use the skill of Grant Hogan, counter boss one, draw a card, counter charge, and flip, then we use the skill of our stand trigger in our hand to, uh, give it the, um, PG busting skill, we double our power, and then we use the skill again, shove to soul, and so our vanguard is now 176,000. Um, so we attack for 13,000 to his vanguard. And he decides to uh, block that. We attack for 193k um, to his vanguard. So his pretty much only choices here is no guard or PG, and I break through it. So he does PG. Uh, he double PGs. So I check a critical trigger, I give crit to vanguard, power to rear guard, heal trigger, heal, power to rear guard, check three, um, and check four. Uh, at the end of the battle, this restands, it attacks for 186 to crit, and he just cannot guard that. Um, so he takes uh, two damage, and he checked the, the extra damage just in case, and he would have six damage healed. Um, if it was the next card in his deck. So that was actually like his seventh damage, rather. But yeah, like I said, like the Vanguard in this deck is just very threatening, very hard to get around. Like the deeper the game goes, like the worse it is for your opponent. And it's hard to beat up Gallop in the early game because of their base power. Um, 
and their G Guardians working the way that they do, being so defensive. So um, we're against Gargo one, one last time. We ride, they ride, we 10k no pass. Um, then we attack with Grand Wisdom on the Rearguard Circle, then we attack with Vanguard, check a Grand Gallop. Um, we get attacked for 14, we take it this time. And then we draw for turn, uh, we use the skill build standard, give 4k to our Vanguard, we attack for 13, and then we attack for 17, checking two cards, nothing. Into the battle, or into the turn, we shove Grand Wisdom into Soul, counter charge, and uh, that's it. Grand, Grand Wisdom works as our soul charge, so it's basically a counter charge, soul charge. Um, is using all the Gurgwit skills, calls out his Unite units, uh, calls out the units, rest from the stride skill, then calls Henrius, um, top three. Uh, that gets 3k, Stand Trigger gets 3k, and then he plays a card, and he forgot to use uh, Gurgwit skill, so he realized it's like mid attack, so he just didn't do it. Um, it checks a critical, and that's it. So we take two damage, and then he attacks for 16. We guard, we stride, we soul blast um, to make our Vanguard 40k. We use the skill of Grand Hogan, counter boss, draw, um, counter charge, and then plus 4k. We attack for 11. Uh, so usually we would attack with our other column first, then Grand Gallop Blast, seeing as it has a burst ability, but we're not going to be able to reach Generation Break 3. Um, in this turn, so we just decided to attack with Grand Gallop first. So we check four cards, one of them is a stand trigger, so that was cool. We attack for 11, and then we attack for 18, and our opponent just decides to take it. And then our opponent strides into uh, Gregory Helios using the skill, uh, the stride skill, to call a card, shuffle, top card comes to field as rest. Uses the skill of Gigatech Ringer. And then he calls Karinas. Uh, Karinas skill. Put back a card. Draw. Um, counter charge. And then he decides to play Gigatech Ringer to the Rearguard Circle. And then he pumps his Vanguard because he is Generation Break 3. Uh, and then he attacks us for 18. Uh, we think about the fact if we need to no guard the Vanguard and take the chance. And I calculate the biggest guard that I can make and it's not big enough to block Vanguard. Um, even with my G guard because I would only be able to G guard and then block with my uh, 10k. In my hand everything else is useless as a guard and intercept. So. I wouldn't be able to have enough except for one to pass, so I decide to just um, guard the rear guard and then no guard the vanguard. I hope that he doesn't get a crit. Um, so he checks a vanilla, a heal, then a crit. So I was like, oh, that sucks. And then he checks a uh, stand trigger as well. So really, um, I had no chance to win that one once he checked the crit, um, unless I had six damage healed. Um, but unfortunately, I did not. So. That ended up being uh, the third uh, Grand Gallop game. And with that being said, that has been the future fight for the Grand Gallop deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like the video. Thumbs up. It helps a lot more than you guys think. Smash that like button. Love that like button. Um, give care to that like button. <laughs> but yeah, um, so uh, make sure you guys are also subscribing to support the channel. Um, that helps a lot and if you are already subscribed uh, be sure to click the bell button next to the subscribe button to stay updated with when videos are uploaded um, and stuff like that also be sure to check the description down below for our social medias facebook instagram twitter and if you guys want to support the channel a little more than liking and subscribing then those options are also down in the description down below through our patreon and our merch store um, but with that being said this has been josh from card empire and i'll see you guys on the next video peace guys